you can develop the optimal fitness protocols for you. So that includes what to do each day of the week and your fitness protocol across the week and indeed across the month and the year and even year to year. When we had Dr. Andy Galpin on the podcast, he said something very important that we want to keep in mind today, which is concepts are few, methods are many. That is, there are an infinite number of different programs and exercises and set and rep schemes and different runs and burpees and pushups, et cetera, et cetera, that one can follow. However, there are really just a few basic concepts or principles of muscle physiology, of cardiovascular function, of connective tissue function that provide or set the basis for the adaptations that we call fitness or that lead to fitness. So I'm gonna list those off now. We can talk about a fitness protocol that's really aimed mainly toward developing skill. That's one. Or speed, that's another. Or power, which is speed times strength. Or specifically strength. Or hypertrophy, growth of muscles. Or endurance, such as muscular endurance. Muscular endurance is, for instance, your ability to stay in a plank position or to do a wall sit, you know, to sit on an invisible chair against a wall or other forms of endurance like near pure anaerobic endurance. So a one minute sprint or less, or a one minute all out cycling on a stationary bike, this sort of thing, or endurance that occurs in the kind of three to 12 minute total duration range. So that might be sprints or high intensity interval type training. It could be a all out swim. It could be all out row. That's another form of endurance, taps into different fuel systems, different aspects of muscle physiology, et cetera. And then endurance that lasts 30 minutes or more, which is typically what people think about when they think about endurance. But of course, the other forms of endurance matter. So we've got skill, speed, power, strength, hypertrophy, muscular endurance, anaerobic endurance, what I would call three to 12 minute endurance, although it goes by other names as well, and 30 minutes or more endurance type exercise and adaptations. Each and every one of these requires different principles, different concepts in order to improve, say your muscular strength or your hypertrophy or both. However, there's a general theme that sits beneath all adaptations leading to fitness. And that's what we're really gonna set down as the base layer, the foundation of everything we talk about today. And that's that we need to think about what are the modifiable variables. Again, I'm borrowing directly from the episode with Dr. Andy Galpin. He was the one that said modifiable variables are the key thing to think about. What are you going to modify? What are you going to change in order to increase one or some of the various things I listed off before? Skill, speed, power, strength, hypertrophy, endurance, et cetera, et cetera. And some of the key concepts that emerge from that discussion are that we need to think about progressive overload. Normally when people hear about progressive overload, they think about adding more weight to a bar or picking up heavier dumbbells, but that could also be progressive overload in the context of running up a hill of steeper incline or running a little bit faster or a little bit further and so on and so forth. Now, as I promised earlier today, we are not going to drill into each and every one of the mechanisms that underlie the different adaptations that are going to develop speed and strength and endurance, et cetera because that was covered in the podcast with Dr. Andy Galpin and the other podcasts with experts that I mentioned earlier. And we, again, will provide links to those podcasts if you wanna drill into those mechanisms. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a program that essentially is designed for you to maximize all aspects of fitness to the extent that you can simultaneously maximize all aspects of fitness, but then to change or modify that protocol so that if you want to build up more, for instance, strength and you want to just hold on to the endurance you have, you don't wanna build endurance, at least not in that week or that month, you can do that. Or if you wanna improve your endurance while maintaining your strength, you can do that and so on and so forth. Most people I do believe would like a combination of strength and endurance and flexibility and maybe even hypertrophy, particularly for certain muscle groups that maybe are not as well developed as other muscle groups. They wanna bring balance to their physique, both for sake of aesthetics and for sake of health and for sake of you know, general functioning, to maybe even to eliminate pain. The protocol that I'm going to describe really works as a foundational template for that as well. So let's drill into that foundational protocol and 
I'll keep, keep referring to it as the foundational protocol, not because it's the one that I use, although it is the one that I use, and not because it's the one that we're talking about today, although it's the one we're talking about today, but because we need some general framework from which to build out the more specific protocols that we'll get into in a bit more detail later. So in this foundational protocol for fitness, what you'll notice is that on any one given day, you're going to focus on one particular aspect of fitness. Maybe it's endurance, maybe it's strength, maybe it's hypertrophy. In particular, it might be hypertrophy for a particular muscle group or muscle groups. That said, across the entire week, it's designed to bring fitness and different forms of fitness to all aspects of your body. So this particular protocol begins on Sunday, although that's simply the day that I happen to begin the protocol. And again, this protocol is not important because it's the one that I follow. I follow it because it is important. In other words, it's a protocol that's really gleaned from the scientific literature and the experts that is for you. So this fitness protocol is really about you. I just may refer to it as the one that I follow um, simply for ease of communication. And for me, my week begins on Sunday. So I do my very best to get a workout in on Sunday. And for me, that workout is that of a endurance workout. It's designed to either maintain or increase my endurance. And the endurance type that I'm referring to is endurance of 30 minutes or more. In fact, for me, the goal is always to get either 60 to 75 minutes of jogging. So this would be so-called zone two cardio. People probably have heard of zone two cardio, but if you haven't, that's okay. Zone two cardio is something that you could measure with a heart rate monitor or other device, but you don't need to. Zone two cardio is the kind of cardiovascular exercise in which you're pushing yourself to move such that you're breathing faster than normal, your heart is beating faster than normal. However, you are still able to sustain a conversation, but if you were to push yourself any harder, that is move faster or go up a steeper incline at the same rate you happen to be at any one moment, you would lose that ability to speak. You wouldn't be able to complete sentences. You would be out of breath or you'd have to pause mid-sentence. Now it's near impossible, even with a heart rate monitor to stay exactly in zone two, unless you're very, very skilled at that. So I don't obsess over that. And in fact, I don't wear a heart rate monitor when I do this exercise. But for me, the goal is to head out on Sunday and get 60 to 75 minutes of jogging in zone two. Now, of course, I like to jog, but that doesn't mean that you have to jog. You could replace jogging with rowing on a rowing machine, or maybe even rowing an actual boat, if you have access to that, or cycling or swimming, something that allows you continuous movement for 60 to 75 minutes at that zone two threshold we talked about earlier. For me, that can include some hills. And when I say hills, they could be very steep hills, but I'll simply slow my pace down in order to stay in that roughly zone two range. Or it could be that they are more low grade hills and I might you know, just slow down a little bit or I might even push myself a tiny bit that day, but really I'm just trying to build that long endurance. I'm trying to build up my capacity or maintain my capacity to go a long distance without fatiguing. 